y'all welcome back to super geeked i'm victoria and today i have a what's all video for you it's been a hot minute since i've made a what's all video so these are sales from the end of july through mid-august i own a reselling business where i sell women's clothing sometimes men's and children's mid-century hard goods and antique collectibles so today i'm going to share with you ebay and poshmark sales if you're a reseller or if you're interested in getting to reselling i think these videos are very helpful because it shows what's selling for other people you hear about brands you can pick up when you're out thrifting and you also can get insight on to price points you might want to list an item at all kinds of good things so we're going to start with ebay y'all remember the america's thrift supply shoe boxes i got well this is from the first boxes i sold these michael kors graffiti heels they sold for $59.85 over on eBay, and my cost of goods were $4.12 in that box. I've already made a profit on those first two boxes, and after fees and shipping, I brought home $40 and three cents on those heels, and they only took 12 days to sell. The next item was an item that I picked up in a state sale, and it too did not take long to sell. It only took 16 days and sold for $37.20 and it was this really cool 1960s sort of psychedelic mod Bisquick can where you used to like get your flower it would when you buy it from the store it would be in this tin and so I sold it because the graphics was were real cool and I only paid $4.62 at the estate sale for it so super happy about that sale Next up is a brand I recommend that you are on the lookout for. It's A Goldie. I've had a lot of success with their jeans. And even a, I sold a top recently, but these were some shorts. I've never sold their shorts before. These sold on eBay for $90.15. They had a lot of interest on all the platforms I had them on. They sold in 35 days. I paid $5 and change for them at a liquidation store here in Mississippi. But they were from that thread up buyout that I had done a video on if you haven't seen it. And after fees and shipping, I made $67.29. So definitely don't sleep on a Goldie. They are a great brand. Next up is Coach. <laughs> so I don't pick up tons of Coach. I did a video here on YouTube comparing the thread up name brand rescue box and the Coach rescue box and they were about even on what I expected to make for profit. I have not made a profit on either of those boxes by the way. They are still dead even. <laughs> this sold for $71.60 on eBay but I did pay $20 a bag because it was $100 for I think five bags. So after you take away the 20 and fees and shipping I only made $29.37 which is still great but it took forever to sell and like I said I'm still negative on both of those boxes. Okay, and another eBay sale was this Tadashi Shoji dress. I do like this brand. It seems to have a little bit more of a mature audience, but it is good for like evening wear. I picked this dress up at a thrift store in New Orleans for $7.10, and it did sell for $92.15 on eBay. After eBay took $14.18 for fees and promoted listings, and shipping was taken out. I made $64.91. So if you see Tadashi Shoji out, I would recommend picking it up. If you know me, I love to sell dresses. So evening wear, especially you get a good bang for your buck. Today's video is sponsored by Vindu. And I just want to thank Vindu for sponsoring this video. But I want to show you very quickly how fast it is for me to cross list to another platform. Do you list on multiple platforms? but you're still manually doing it all by hand. Well, I was just like you. I wanted to save money. I thought I can do it myself. Why would I pay for a service for something that, you know, I could do for free? What would end up happening is I would never cross post it to other platforms because it was so tedious having to recreate a new listing on each of the platforms I sell on. When I found Vindu, a couple years ago, it changed everything for me. And it is so worth the little amount of money I pay each month to be able to cross post within minutes. So if you've been curious about cross posting and whether it's worth the money, let me tell you, it totally is. You can create your listing in Vindu and then cross post it to all the platforms you sell on, 
or you can create it in your favorite marketplace. In that case, for me, it's Poshmark. Poshmark's super easy to list on. So I create my listing in Poshmark, takes a couple minutes. Once I get it listed, I then import it into Vindu and I cross post it to the other platforms and it just takes a couple clicks. And now I have no excuse not to list on other platforms because it literally takes me a couple minutes. So let me show you how easy it is to cross post an item from start to finish. All right, so here we are on my Poshmark closet. Here is the new listing that I just created of these little Lucky Brand suede booties. I'm gonna come up here to Vendu, and this is what my inventory page looks like. And we're just gonna come over to import. I'm gonna choose Poshmark. And it's gonna think for a second. Okay, so there it is. I'm gonna click on it, and then I'm gonna hit import item. It's imported, so we're gonna go back to my inventory page. We're gonna click on the listing. So this is the first page that comes up. It's the Vindu default page. I go ahead and make changes on this one that I want to go to all the listings. So I'm just gonna type in US size seven and a half. I'm gonna put in my zip code and Primary color is going to be multicolored, and then package weight. So I'm going to come over to eBay, and you'll see that the US size seven and a half transferred. I'm going to come under here, and these are all the item specifics that I have to put in. So these are booties. Upper material is going to be suede, women's boot. It's already pre-owned. And I'm gonna accept offers to 45 and then hit list on eBay. And then it's already listed and now I'm gonna come over to Mercari and we're gonna to go to Boots, size seven and a half. They have a lot less item specifics and I'm gonna hit list. Now, when I come back to the inventory page, you're gonna see it listed on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark. There you go. All right, so thanks again to Vindu for sponsoring this video. Listen guys, I'm only ever going to tell you about items that I use. I'm gonna always give my honest opinion and I don't take sponsorships from just any company. And I was using Vindu long before they offered to sponsor any of my videos, so. Take it for what it is. It's just me letting you know what works for me and what has really brought my business to the next level. Thank you, Vindu, so much for sponsoring this video and being so supportive of the reseller community. I can't say enough about this great service. All right, let's talk about Poshmark. So first up is a vintage Pyrex dish. I picked this up at a thrift store in New Orleans and it sold for 22. It's not one of the super desirable ones. Some of them can sell for $500. This was not one of those. Um, but I was really happy with the sale. It sold in 97 days, so three months, and sold for $22, so happy with that. Next up was an item that I sold from my own closet, and I have an exciting announcement that I'll have at the end of this video, but it was a pair of Nike Metcon. I used these when I went to the gym. They were cross training shoes, so you can use them for CrossFit or any sort of training in the gym. They sold in 13 days for $52. I've had them for several years. Obviously my cost of goods were zero and I came home with $39.88 for some shoes I don't wear anymore. And will be the inspiration for what's to come in September for me. Next up was a item from a DIY designer box from ThreadUp. It was a Burberry scarf. It did take 290 days to sell. It sold for $100 on Poshmark. Cost of goods were $17.14 on that ThreadUp DIY designer box and Poshmark took 20, so I made $62.86. Obviously, you know Burberry is gonna do well. <laughs> Next up were some Kate Spade earrings I also got in a ThreadUp box. They were from the ThreadUp Fun Box. These sold for $20, which is still great. I've already made a profit on that box, so this was just extra on top of that. I've talked many times about Bowdoin being one of the bread and butter brands that I like to sell. 
the sold for 35. I always say they sell between 35 and about $55. So this was on the lower end, but it was kind of like a more dated style. It had a drop waist and it was like a Jersey knit dress. So not one of their more tailored dresses, but still a great sale. And then I am not a big seller of athletic wear. Anybody will tell you, usually I'm passing the athletic wear onto my girls if we're shopping together. But I do occasionally pick up something that, you know, I think, oh, I'm going to give this a shot. That was the case with these Nike leggings. They were new with tags and they sold for $20. So um, I like to experiment every once in a while. But for me, athletic wear is just not my jam. And I, I just don't do as well. I mean, except for if it's like, you know, some more higher end or Lululemon, then I might list it. But other than that, I'm not really looking at athletic wear. I'll let my other friends sell in that category. <laughs> okay, this was from the dreaded Jomar boxes. I still am in the negative on those boxes. Um, I know Jomar doesn't really exist in the capacity it did before in the wholesale side. So I'm not gonna get on a tangent about them, but it was the worst mystery boxes I've ever purchased. I've never lost money like I did on these Jomar boxes. So this was an ASOS dress. This was probably one of the better items in that box. It sold for $50. Cost of goods were $10.60 on a almost all Forever 21 box. Um, and after Poshmark took their fees of 10, I took home $29.40. And like I said, I'm still negative $58.53 on that, the box that this one came from. Next up was a vintage item I purchased last summer. It was a men's 1970s Dixon Jackson Pearl Snap Western shirt, and it sold for 20. I like to pick up men's if I find some pieces that speak to me um, or that I'm interested in. I don't really seek out men's, but if I find something I think that I can sell and make a profit on, I'm gonna pick it up. And this, this shirt sold for 20, so I was happy with that. Next up was a bundle of some lower end brands that I wouldn't normally source in a thrift store. Well, I wouldn't source in a thrift store now. Um, there were some American Eagle jeans. I do pick up American Eagle sometimes at the bins if they're a uh, newer style. These were actually some older American Eagle, but I bought them from someone who was about to donate a bunch of clothes. And um, so I paid thrift store prices for the items that I got. And so I was fine with that. And then it also in contained in the bundle a J. Crew top that I purchased at the very beginning of me starting reselling. It actually took 1,031 days to sell this J. Crew top. It was J. Crew Factory. I'd never pick up J. Crew Factory now. Uh, it was semi sheer. It was just this basic top. I don't know why I purchased it. I mean, it was 99 cents. So I'm guessing that's why, because I used to buy stuff that was 99 cents when Goodwill had those dollar days. Um, <laughs> even if they weren't great band brands, because I was still trying to figure things out as far as reselling. But the American Eagle jeans sold for 17. And after you divide up the fees from Poshmark, I made 860 on those. And then the J. Crew top sold for 17 also. And I paid 99 cents for them after you deduct the fees. I made 1261 on those. So total 2121 on this bundle. So Still a great sale with some lower end items. Next up was a designer piece I got up in a thread. Up, I got in another thread up designer box. It was Norma Kamali. It was just a boyfriend t-shirt, but it was new with tags and I sold it for 65. Cost of goods were 1714 in that box. And so after fees, I took home $34.86. And then another item I would not pick up again. I don't pick up a lot of Lucky Brand anymore, but this was a denim button front skirt. Denim skirts just are not selling. Uh, they were really popular early to mid 2000s, but people just are not wearing denim skirts the way they used to. So this finally sold for $25 after 710 days being listed. And I came up with $14.69. Okay, so back to the formal wear. Bridesmaids dresses are a great place to start if you are starting to sell some dresses. I highly recommend dresses. This was a Morley dress. I bought these in the same lot that I bought the American Eagle jeans from a person that was donating a bunch of items. Uh, I sold it for 45, cost of goods were five. 
and after fees I took home $31. This was actually only listed for 56 days and I had a lot of questions about the dress. Bridesmaids dresses usually sell really well. I have a really good sell through rate on those and so I recommend trying them if you haven't tried any bridesmaid dresses. Next up with a, was a set of mid-century pottery. These were four dishes. They would have been in a Lazy Susan set with a center dish. Did not have the Lazy Susan, did not have the center dish, but did have the four outer dishes. And it sold for $33. And I only paid $2.26 for all four of them. And after fees, I made $24.12. And I got a lovely love note from the lady who purchased them who has a mid-century house and she's super excited to use those. So that was really exciting from one collector to another to know they're going to a good home. Next up is now another one of my bread and butter favorites, Everlane. These were the high rise kick crop jeans in a black wash. They sold for $44. I had picked this up at the liquidation store here in Mississippi that had the thread up buyout. They only were listed for nine days. So Everlane jeans, definitely keep them on the radar. And another Bowdoin dress. This one was a more structured dress. It was corduroy. It was called the Christina. It was a novelty print with little leaves all over it. Super cute. And it sold for $52 on Poshmark. I had picked this up at a thrift store. And so I took home $33.38. I love picking up Bowdoin. I really like the style of their dresses. And so I'm generally going to pick them up if I'm getting them at thrift store prices. Because like I said, they'll generally sell between $35 and $55. This was a piece I was really surprised about. I got this at a New Orleans thrift store. It was Anthropology, and it was a polka dot romper. It was so cute. It had little ruffles and a lot of the solds were around $50, but y'all, it was listed for 758 days. I'm shocked because it was really cute, but it did sell for $50 after all that time being listed. I just don't know. Sometimes I'm really surprised that some cute pieces will just sit. All right, rounding out the Poshmark sales, I had a donation item. This was donated during the pandemic, but I'm terrible about listing jewelry for some reason. I don't know why, because a lot of it is sold that I've listed recently. But these were some Ermish bracelets, that's the brand, and they were the stackable bracelets. They were made out of stones, and they sold for $20, and I didn't pay anything for them, so that's great. Oh, and they sold in 79 days, so that's great too. Next, it was a Vince uh, thermal top that I bought from a thrift store in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I don't know if I would pick this up again. I do like selling Vince, but the basic stuff doesn't move very fast and it only sold for 20 bucks. So um, don't know if I'll pick that up again. Okay, I'm always telling you about looking for the Levi's premiums, the ones with the leather patch on the back and that actually have a patch in the interior that say premium denim. These were the Levi's premium wedgies, which is a super hot style. They were the high rise with the raw hem and they sold for $52. I only paid $5.35 for them. And after fees and a shipping discount that I gave, I took home $34.53 on those wedgies. Okay, y'all know I love to sell mod cloth. You are always gonna see a mod cloth item in these videos, unless I stop selling mod cloth. <laughs> But this one took forever. So I bought this at the very beginning of my reselling journey when I did a big buyout at the liquidation store of, the, of mod cloth inventory they got in. It sold for 38, but y'all, it sat for 718 days. Now, I did sell this dress in other sizes and they sold fairly quickly a couple years ago. <laughs> but this one, this medium one, I don't know why. It just sat and sat and sat. I relisted it couple times but anyway I'm glad it finally sold. The next item's a vintage piece and I had no way to authenticate this was 100% real but I'm pretty sure it was. So it was a late 70s early 80s style what they call carriage skirt which is about um, below the knees so it's like um, not quite midi length but like calf length and what it does is it wraps and it snaps in the front. Very popular. Uh, they had a lot of these skirts in like terry styles in that era but this had an embroidery of a carriage on it on it had a single pocket on the front it had red trim the fabric content from what i could tell and the stitching and the style and the lining all said late 70s early 80s to me and then there also was a single button that was the double g gucci logo 
I actually thought about keeping this skirt just to take the button off and make like a, a Gucci necklace out of, you know, the button. But I thought I'm just going to list it first and see if it sells. And then if not, I'm just going to keep it and I won't worry about it. Um, but it had no interior tags, no nothing. So no way for me to 100% authenticate. So in that case, I listed it on Poshmark. I did not list it on eBay for fear that I would get the dreaded ban again. Um, and I didn't want to do that. Um, so I did list it on Poshmark and Mercari and Etsy and just didn't do um, eBay. But it did sell for $80 on Poshmark. I paid $6.30 at the thrift store. And after they took $16, I made $57.70 on this vintage Gucci skirt. Okay, and last item I'm going to share with you are these really cool jeans by Zara. They were called the Ripped Stained High Jeans. They had uh, the full ripped knees. They were in a straight leg. Very cool. They only took 90 days to sell. This would be an example of a Zara piece. I don't pick up all Zara, but trendy Zara pieces I will pick up. So it sold for $46. And I only paid $5.85 for them at the thrift store. After Poshmark fees of $9.20, I took home $30.95 on those Zara jeans. So I've said this before. I'll say it again. If you find Zara and it's a cute style, look it up. It may be worth picking up. So that's all the sales I'm going to share with you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do have a big announcement. So I have a death pile that's been looming for two years. I've never gotten rid of it. And sometimes I've got it down, but then it always builds back up. So what I've decided to do in September, I traditionally will do a source free September where I try to bring down my death pile. And I'm going to do that this year, too. However, something else is going to happen in September, and that is I am only going to source from my house. I need to get organized. And so what I think I'm going to do is the whole month of September, I am going to film me going through each room of my house and finding items to list and hopefully give you motivation, especially if you're a new reseller. You don't have to go out and buy inventory. Start at home. Start finding stuff in your own house. And I have so many collectibles, plus the regular stuff like clothing, children's toys, things like that. So I am going to even get outside of my comfort zone as far as what I normally list. And I'm going to go through my house and I'm going to try to sell as much as I can and make room for new things that I buy. So that is my big announcement is I'm going to be sourcing from home all month long in September and I'm going to take you along with me. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you again for Vindu for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye y'all.